Today we're going to the Scottish Isles, Bohemia and South Carolina. You never know where the prehistory guys are going to take you next. Michael here. And Rupert here. We're the Prehistory Guys and this is a Prehistory Flash, a roundup of news and fascinating research from the world of prehistoric archaeology. First up today is the Ness of Brodger on Orkney. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the Ness is a UNESCO World Heritage Site up off the northeast tip of Scotland. And it really is the hub of Orkney's Neolithic past. I mean, some have even said that uh, it's the hub of the whole of Neolithic Britain's past. But then that's another discussion, I think, rather not one to be had here, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that aside, it certainly is one of the most important ongoing archaeological digs in the world. The, the finds, dating to around 5,000 years ago, have been astonishing in all the time that the uh, the excavation has been going on since, what, round about 2008, I think it is. Mm -hmm. However, in all that, here's a bit of trivia for you. In all the time they've been excavating at the Ness, the team have uncovered around 80,000 Neolithic pottery sherds. How about that? Oh, it's staggering, isn't it? <laughs> I know, it's impressive. But that's not the thing we're here to report. Uh, Rupert, do you remember uh, the exciting discovery back in the spring of 2021 when they found the impression of a fingerprint yeah, yeah, on yeah, one of those pieces deal. of pottery? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, since then, they've found more fingerprints, bringing the number up to eight. So what they did, they sent those <laughs> prints off to expert Professor Kent Fowler at the University of Manitoba in Canada for analysis. And according to him, it turns out that they all belong to young adult men and that the most recent print to be found belonged to a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> Do you know, I, I have to say, before this research, I genuinely had absolutely no idea that you could age fingerprints anyway, let alone no, accurately. Uh no, absolutely not. Neither did I. I. Apparently, it's all to do with um, the measurable way that the ridges uh, form as, as children develop so that they can be aged into adolescence, but not after adolescence. Mm. So uh, yeah, after adulthood is reached, I guess the, uh, the ridges stop developing. So you can't do that any further yeah. than that. So uh, the upshot of that is, of course, is naturally it's being suggested that this could be interpreted as the younger potters being taught by the more experienced adults. Mm. It's also interesting that all the prints found so far appear to be male. Yeah, that is intriguing, isn't it? Yeah, I, w I wonder if we'll ever have a clearer idea on how male and female roles were established in prehistory. You know, were the women weaving while the men were getting dirty, do you think? Well, I'm, I'm not sure how to answer that question, <laughs> really. I, I suppose as time goes on, we'll have a, a clear idea of what our idea might be about, uh, you know, from mm. uh, the 21st century point of view, uh, the male and female roles might have been, but it's all tied up with politics and stuff, isn't it? So we've got to be really, really careful how we interpret this thing, these things, yeah. Anyway, it's probably fair to say that we'll, we'll have an awful lot to learn still from the ongoing excavations at the nest, and I dare say that this won't be the last time that the nest uh, comes up in a prehistory flash. Absolutely, no, and we need to be getting back up there, don't we? Uh, preferably oh, sure. while, a, while a dig is actually in season. So Yeah, yeah. Well, even if we can't do that, we need to talk to Nick Card because he'll he will be an absolutely fantastic interviewee for our folks here yeah he said he'd do it he said he'd he do did. it so we just he need did. to pin him down he's a hard man to pin down but we will <laughs> Anyway. If you're watching this, Nick, pick up your emails. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> OK, well, moving on. I'm taking us over to the Czech Republic and a surprising discovery near the mythical mountain of Zip. Uh, that's well spelt R-I-P, uh, a blip, but it's pronounced Zip. Now, a team of archaeologists from the University of West Bohemia in Pilsen have discovered a long barrow built around 3800 BC and staggeringly 
It is not far off the size of West Kennet Long Barrow in Wiltshire, which, if you don't know, is the second largest long barrow in Britain. Now, the newly discovered barrow is 90 metres long and 25 metres wide. So for comparison, it's slightly shorter and slightly wider than West Kennet. Okay. And it gets better. They excavated the burial chamber, which was lined with preserved timber, as if that's not rare enough, preserved wood. Uh, but the biggest surprise of all was that this enormous tomb contained one body, and it was a child. Uh, amazing. Uh, research is all yeah, yeah. ongoing. Uh, the team say that there are still at least another four similar structures in the same location, which seems utterly extraordinary. And they're particularly excited by all of this because this kind of discovery is so rare in Bohemia due to the centuries of intensive farming that have destroyed pretty much all the prehistoric main remains that, uh, that would have been present. Uh, so there you are. An enormous tomb built for a child nearly 6,000 years ago. I'm pretty sure we'll be hearing uh, about more discoveries coming out of this particular set of excavations. Yeah, I mean, it's, as I say, it's another example of uh, LIDAR and, um, you know, ground penetrating yeah. techniques uh, revealing mm. what's needed that we wouldn't just, people wouldn't know about. And I think they're particularly excited in Bohemia because the vast majority of their uh, you know, prehistoric sites have been ploughed mm. over to, uh, so to find something like this is particularly special uh, yeah. for them. And if they've, they've got evidence of, of other monuments like this in, in the landscape around there, then uh, excellent news. It is fascinating, though, that on the surface of it, it, it looks so much like, you know, for example, uh, West Kennet Long Barrow. Yeah. But there the similarities end because underneath the surface we've got a single burial. Yeah. And a burial at that and in a, in a timber-lined chamber or you yeah. know in a pit in a timber lined yeah. uh, pit very very different it's quite something isn't it um mm -hmm. uh, i mean the fa isn't it funny how uh, so extraordinary enough that they've found uh, this uh, timber uh, burial chamber if you like but the fact mm -hmm. that it's only months ago that we were talking about the amazing discovery of some preserved timber uh, on orkney as well i mean it's just it's so rare that, uh, yeah. that timber is preserved in the archaeological record, and here we are, two significant examples, uh, all within the same, what, six months period, roughly? Something like that. Yes, indeed, yeah. Amazing. And talking about time periods, of course, this is bang on, you know, the beginning of uh, Neolithic uh, long barrow building in Britain. So whether that's got any relationship that bears uh, looking at at all, that's another question. But in terms of uh, cont things happening contemporaneously, um, interesting, interesting. Um, also, uh, maybe worth just saying a few words about Jeep itself. The the, the this sacred hill is it sacred hill? Uh, it's got well, it's, special it, significance. It's, anyway. sacred, it's certainly a mythical. Uh, uh, I mean, the mythology surrounding it is it's very important in uh, uh, in Czech mythology. In mm. in many ways, it's reminiscent of Knocknare in uh, in Ireland in County Sligo. You know that there's there is so much mythology. Yeah. Uh, you know, wrapped up ar around uh, this hill, and it uh, yeah, yeah. it does make you wonder. You know, just uh, uh, you know, how far back do those stories go? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, not Nare, You've got the whole uh, of the uh, the Neolithic cemetery uh, mm. round about, and Maves Cairn, <laughs> Maves right Cairn on, on the, the top. top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another thing, a place it reminds me of is the the Reekin in in Shropshire. Which is a sort of single hill sticking out of the, the um, landscape. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on. I just wanted to take a, f a moment though to um, say a few words um, uh, about what the prehistory guys are up to and, and how you can contribute. So I will do that thing. Yes. In a snap my fingers. There we go. I like that. Firstly, though, thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you haven't already done so, please do the like and subscribe thing. It all helps make the wheels go round a bit better. But also, if you love what we do and would like to feel a little bit more involved in the Prehistory Guys project, 
A subscription of just $5 a month gets you all the good stuff on our Patreon page. Exclusive content, a wonderful community, access to the Prehistory Guys inside track and behind the scenes stuff, plus the knowledge that you're helping us set aside the time to make our podcasts, interviews, the flashes and other desktop specials. Click on the link up there if you're interested in that. Thing is, Rupert and I also make films. Now, if you're not into committing to subscriptions and prefer the idea of showing support through a one-off donation, we have a rolling fund that goes directly towards the costs of those films. It helps pay for such things as travel, hotels, food, all the extra expenses of filming on location, wherever in the world that may be. That's where our Buy Me A Coffee campaign comes in. If you're watching this and you're thinking, oh, those poor prehistory guys, they need to get out a bit more. Well, now you know how you can help that happen. Links above and down below. You'll find out what the latest project is and how your donation could be helping. Uh, well said that man. And yes, folks, we really do appreciate your support. So uh, <laughs> on with the show. Uh, what, uh, wh where are we going now? Well, we really do get, need to get out a bit more. I think that's 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 true, isn't it? It is true. <laughs> it's all very well sitting here, zipping all over the globe. <laughs> but no, we need to really get out there. Anyway, anyway, we, now talking about going all over the globe, um, we're going all the way over to South Carolina uh, to a discovery or set of discoveries on Dawes Island, which, if you want a frame of reference, is among a group of islands along the coast about 30 miles from Savannah. Hidden in the coastal marshes, archaeologists have found a pair of shell mounds built between 3,000 and 5,000 years ago, or shell rings. The find was made using LIDAR and other remote sensing techniques, which has been a game changer in this case, really. Apparently, survey work is so difficult in these conditions that you could be standing within a few metres of a site and not see it at all. But that's not the point. About 50 other shell ring sites are known in the southeastern United States, and they're always rich in prehistoric materials, whether that be animal remains or human artefacts. Some rings have even contained ceramics and lithics that have come from up to 100 miles away. Now, obviously, the rings would have been on dry land in the past, and these types of sites are thought to be centres of trade or exchange of goods, if you prefer. The fact that some ring sites have contained non-local materials does make that seem rather likely. Now, it may seem funny to us, but the researchers seem to be far more excited by the development of the method they use for making this discovery <laughs> than the shell rings themselves. True. Yeah. The, the combination of techniques um, form a kind of uh, a deep learning technique for in artificial intelligence, where the computers can themselves can pick out incredibly subtle features that have been associated with previous finds and sometimes this level of subtlety can be completely overlooked by people not looking with normal eyeballs at scanning and scanning satellite imagery you know as people have to do for hours on end yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it seems quite amazing to me too I yeah, find actually. that this whole, uh, you know, development of artificial intelligence in these kinds of disciplines is so exciting because there's stuff that, you know, we, we do often miss the the really subtle details and the stuff that's being thrown up when a computer has picked up an yeah. anomaly that we would have just glossed over. Amazing. And maybe the right to be excited, you know, the, the, more excited about the uh, the technique than uh, the actual discovery of the site. But this, because obviously this is just one example of what the possibilities going forward. Um, mm. the, a, a trained uh, AI algorithm looking for stuff in the landscape. It's one thing yeah. to have the LIDAR, to be, but be able to interpret it, you know, mm. with, with machine learning, with, with, a, with a computer that's done machine learning on it. That's something yeah. else, you know, and uh, opens up whole new world yeah. <laughs> we've got it seems to be so much the case that there is almost too much archaeology I mean, <laughs> could there be such a thing well, well there must be yes there could be because how many archaeologists are there to take care of all the <laughs> well, data? that's true that's true it yes is. there there aren't enough that's certainly true yeah yeah but, uh, I'll, I'll tell you something else that was funny about uh, uh, this research that yeah. made me chuckle was that 
uh, that the researchers have said that uh, from everything that they know and in comparing these sites uh, and the fact that there have been items found in the sites that come, they're not local, they come from, you know, 100 miles away or yeah. whatever. And, uh, and they have said in America, they have interpreted them as centres of trade or exchange. Yes. And that really made me laugh because if they had been dug up in Britain... <laughs> then they would, without a shadow of a doubt, have been called ritual or temples, <laughs> one or the other. And uh, it uh, just yeah. shows the, uh, you know, the, the different mindsets, uh, really. How um, did I know? How did I know that you were going to go there? <laughs> Sorry, can't help it. Comes out of me like Tourette's sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Mm. There we go. Uh, a brief roundup of uh, news from around the uh, archaeological world. I uh, mm. hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers for now. See you, folks. <laughs>